my mission on the doors. I finished cutting these two out yesterday. The stern cabin and the bathroom has continued to the forward starboard side. Now I've got a bit of an issue down here. And if you have a look here, I've already sort of marked out this door, which I'll be cutting out pretty soon. And this will be clad with something, um, some sort of a veneer over the top, because this one is a fully laminated plywood and uh, composite bulky. But down here, uh, this particular bathroom, this has a very small door, our forward head. It's basically a ensuite for our main cabin. And look at the mess I've got in here. But there's a good reason for the mess is that the module and the bulkhead had to be tied together. And as you can see there, I've actually filled it with 10 millimeter laminated foam. So not only have I got the rigidity of the module and the bulkhead, but I've also put a 10 millimeter laminated foam in there, like I've done with all the other ones. And then the great thing is that that's actually filled almost up to here, so that when I cut out the door, I physically got a core in the door with which to mount the door jam, in fact. And it gives me a bit of width to deal with because a lot of these bulkheads are only 12 millimeters thick, so that's not very wide to to place a decent door jam, particularly if I'm going to put about a 20 millimeter door in place here. So that's been a good process, and essentially that's now clamped in place. I'm going to leave that for the day. Tomorrow I can come in and remove all of those clamps and just cut the door out because that has been a difficult area to get in and out of. It's a tiny little door. The door will be 42 centimeters wide, so it'll be a reasonable door. And in this particular case, we don't want a door opening inwards because if it opens inwards, you can not get to the toilet and then shut the door with this particular one. So it'll actually open out into this room and rest against this robe here. So yeah, it's gonna be gonna look quite nice. I'll show you a photo of what it's supposed to look like and what it will look like, uh, pretty similar to this will obviously be going with a lot of woodwork in this area but i've got a lot to do in here now janet's coming in tomorrow she's going to be laminating all this together and yesterday i got in and sanded the margin between the module and the bulkhead so she can get the tabbing done around here as well and also up here so we're starting to get the point where we're getting the whole thing solid and if you look at what this is supposed to look like here i'll just clean the dust off that from my grind session yesterday but yeah that's sort of what we're aiming for here similar sort of look now the structure is the thing and the, the dressing out is going to be quite substantial but really nice to have the structure done it's uh, very very pleasing to have this stage of it done the woodwork and everything is to come it's 3 p.m and uh just decided to come to work So what's this showing up at three o'clock in the afternoon gig? You mean after my other job? I've done nothing today because I had visitors no, all day. Say, oh, you've done this I have done nothing before. but talked all day. And I went to work this morning, but not this job. So you leave me alone. It's Marine Rescue morning. Went out to lunch with all the friends while I worked. While I entertained the masses here. What are you doing now? Tabbing. More tabbing. <laughs> so we're in the in the master suite today. And I'm sick of tabbing because I've been tabbing. All this for the last three days, and uh, we're really moving along in a big way. Oh, didums. It's the world's smallest vial in there. Lucky two seconds ago it was the finger. <laughs> but we're going to integrate this module. We're going to basically tab all the way around here, and that'll pretty much finish that. I've still got to do a little bit of work along here to get this finished, but that'll wait for another day. Check on the progress. Here we go with that overhead tabbing, having fun. Oh, you've done it. Oh, no, I've only done one there. I've done one there. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. It's pretty good, eh? Yeah. Cathartic. Mm -hmm. oh. the other side. I was telling my friend Al how Janet topped out after about three hours work, and he said, it doesn't get any more comfortable than that, sitting on a step doing some laminating. <laughs> <laughs> Did a runner on me and left me till what, not nearly eight o'clock at night. Finishing off a job for you. <laughs> Come on, good to see you back though. <laughs> no one's going to believe you. No one believes me because I'm a hyperbole man apparently. Right. So after a couple of months of uh, visitors walking up through here, I've uh, gotten so paranoid about someone falling because Zach had a bit of a slip here the other day and this lid 
uh, that I haven't secured slipped out and, uh, and I just got really worried then. I thought anyone comes up here and treads on anything that's loose and gets hurt, and I'm gonna be responsible for that. And we're just gonna stop having a lot of people on site here because it's just, uh, it's not a very safe environment for people to be walking around. You know, I've got dust and, uh, and often I'll have ladders and the like. So I've decided I'm gonna to try to secure everything up because I do get a lot of visitors and a lot of my worry is having people on site here. So basically, this step here has to be put in place. I've just spent a good hour or so sanding the margins here around the outside. And I've also uh, cored this slightly because I'm gonna use epoxy to glue it in place like I have on the other side over there. And uh, basically I'm gonna glue that onto the boat now. I've just cleaned it, I've prepped it. I'm gonna put it in immediately and then I'll glass it in so to avoid any chance of anyone getting hurt. And It's the 15th of November and it's freezing. It's like snowing, 100 k's inland, unbelievable. It's almost bloody summer for God's sake. You know, what are you gonna do? I'm wearing a jumper and I've never worn a jumper in November ever. Right, the other day I put in an infill of uh, an off cut of solid glass, which is now glued to the bulkhead and to the end um, transom, step through transom of the boat here. And I've also glued in the what I'm going to call my winglet uh, on the back of the boat here. Uh, these little infills that I've put in now. I'm going to integrate all this together. I've basically chopped off the back of the boat, which was a pretty ugly um, bump there. But this is going to get all sanded back now. And I'll be able to then tab around the corner here, glass all this together and make it all look like it was all one piece. Um, that's the plan. Now, I've got this mould here that is going to form... A join mould around the back of the stern of the boat here where the hull and the deck meet but for now I'm just going to grind this away and I'll get this all sanded up and uh, and tied it up and ready for integration like I have with all of these now I've already glassed underneath this today I've actually laminated that that's actually got four layers of 600 double bias holding that together and uh, varying lapping overlapping tabs <laughs> working on the little um, side winglets down in here and I guess you have to settle on a shape at some point and I've decided on a curve like so which continues on with the stairway now I have to core the foam out of the edge of this and fill with a filler and that'll be cotton flock vinyl and some of cabasil to make it rock hard and what I'll do is I'll actually use my router here on this side here, you can see I've got a bit of filling here to make it all even, but you can see I'm starting to route out these edges of the foam, and I'll get this back about two centimetres, and then I'll fill it, and then I'll be able to round it off. Now, I'm going to put a combing edge around the bottom of this to give it more strength. It is, you are able to stand on this at the moment, but to really reinforce it, it needs a further ridge around the outside to, uh, to ensure that it's always safe and then there's going to be a complete laminate go right across the top of all this region here to complete it. And that'll finish the, uh, the job before I can fair and paint the whole thing.
keep looking at this thinking it's just a bit bland and uh, I don't just want to have a flat underneath. I'm not really sure what sort of a finish I can put on it, but I come up with a bit of a, um, a curved foam lip that uh, what I can do is, is round this and make it nice and soft. Uh, it'll give it sort of marginal amount of strength along the edge because it's already got a ton of strength. I mean, you can hang off this with no trouble at all, and it's, it's pretty much not a structural thing, but it's more cosmetic. But by curving this foam edge, it's actually got a solid glass edge, and what I'm going to do is roll this in and glass this whole thing together. And uh, and just I just think this little little bit of detail like this can make a massive difference to the look of a boat from behind. And I'm hoping I can make it look good. I'll sort of get a, a bit of a rounded look once I get this glued in place. But I've got it clamped in. And uh, I'm sort of hoping that that will, you know, just, just add that little bit of detail that it's lacking uh, before I go fairing it and painting it all. I'm trying to get all to the point where I can actually do a final laminate over the whole thing and then give it a good coat of fairing. So I've got a hell of a lot of work to do up in around this region here. But uh, once I get started, it's going to be a pretty quick process to get it all done and uh, yeah there's a lot happening in the back of this boat all of my sins are gonna have to be paid for for modifying everything that I've seen but you know at the end of the day it's as I need it and uh, and as I want it so it's my boat or well, it's our boat and, uh, and I really I, oh, I'm always getting in trouble for saying my boat Jenna goes it's your boat is it it's your boat is it and uh, she knows I always mean ours but uh, you know hmm always in trouble you know what it's like fellas uh you just gotta you gotta give into it it's it's ours it's not mine but yeah so what i'll do is i'll get onto that one tomorrow but i'll glue this one in place now let it set come back tomorrow cut a similar strip for here and uh and that'll be job done it just absolutely blows my mind the amount of detailed work that is going into this boat if you're going to build a boat, just going you know, to get bogged down in the detail. And right now, I'm just coming in and I feel like I'm doing nothing at the end of the day, but I'm actually getting there with a lot of the little detail things that I've got in my head. Uh, one of those things is this winglet here, pretty much there, as solid as a rock there. You can actually hang off them. I've, I've done a couple of chin ups, or well, one chin up. <laughs> I don't know what I can do too, but uh, I've done both of them. And uh, although they look pretty rough now, I, I really like that. I like the fact that I've got that curved foam there nice little edge there that means any water that splashes up here is going to splash straight back down again it's not going to keep careering off the back there and uh, and just give it a little bit of extra strength and uh, once i round the top of this i'll be able to roll this right over and tab it right back in underneath ferret paint it and uh and it's it's just going to look amazing and to be honest i think i'm really really happy with the the lines of what i've achieved at the back here um getting this shape uh the whole sugar scoop and this shape here with a life life raft compartment and the works and the davits um, and even this mold that's going to be made into a nice ridge cap all over the back i think it's all coming together now the other part of the detail it's just doing my head in is this hatch here um, i've actually only made it as big as the ladder i didn't want it any bigger because quite frankly i don't want too much water sloshing around in there the less water i get in this ladder hatch the better and I think that's actually going to work a treat. And I think, look at the detail in it though. There's going to be a lot of coring and a lot of laminating going into that to complete that. But once that part's done and, and the back end of it here, I've got to get in and work out how to block this last bit in because the last boat obviously had a larger ladder and, uh, and I don't need that. I've got this tiny little area here. I'm going to fill this with some foam and then I'm going to re-laminate the whole back or the whole stern of this sugar scoop. And, uh, and tidy it all up and make it all nice and fed and uh, and look really like it was never meant to uh, look any different. So yeah, it's, it's coming together. I mean, it's a hell of a messy end. I wish it was around the other way because everybody would be seeing the bow, which actually looks quite pretty. But the uh, the stern certainly doesn't at the moment. But I'm, I'm convinced that uh, it won't take me that long now that I've got this structure into this thing and tomorrow I can start to block this in, get this all sealed up. I want it watertight so that I can get in and finish it. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it, but it has certainly taken a hell of a lot of time to get this detail work done. I just get something in my head how it should look and then it has to look that way. And, uh, and sometimes I've got to compromise, other times I don't have to, I'll just work around it until I get to the look that I want. And it's more about the function, to be honest. And 
I'm pretty stoked with this. I've got tons of room here for probably a three and a half meter long tender. I'll probably go for about 3.1 meter hard foam cord tender. Uh, I'll make it myself as well. I won't be buying one. I certainly haven't got 20 grand to throw around on a three and a half meter tender, but I can certainly make one for probably a thousand bucks. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And then Janet and I are off for a four day walk. We're doing a 35 to 40 K, I think it is walk down in uh, on the southern tip of New South Wales. That's a place called Eden and it's called the Light to Light Walk. And Janet's been at me, let's go walk and let's go walk. And my knee's rooted, but I'm gonna put on a brace and I'm gonna grin and bear it because Janet grins and bears a lot of my projects. And this is one of the things she loves to do. She loves to walk, so we're gonna walk. Well, I got to the end of the week, I was absolutely smashed. And um, Janet has dragged me off on a three day hike. And I was pretty tired. I was thinking, geez, it's gonna be nice to have a good rest, but no. Nah. Jeff and Dagmar are ahead of me, powering ahead. We've got 20 kilo packs on. Look at Jeff. Bit beats laminating, doesn't it, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does, it definitely does. I don't mind laminating, but no. <laughs> so we've got a 30k hike. And uh, it's a beautiful day. We've had incredible weather forecast for this weekend, so we're gonna hold on to that and go camping. Team, Red Rock Bay. Beautiful. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Magic. Well, you can see why they call it Red Rock Bay. Got our own beach, Jeffy. He's got his Jervis Bay Brewery beanie on. Cooking up a, what are you having? Chicken risotto. Chicken, green curry. Green curry green chicken. chicken curry. Dehydrated. Risotto. Yep. Wow, that's not a bad we've, meal. We've got our own private beach. Private beach. Spot on. Isn't this amazing? What a cracker. And beats fiberglassy, mate, I'll tell you. And we had a beautiful swim, too. Yeah, oh. it's a bit chilly. <laughs> and then there's been dolphins. Yeah. Cockatoos, it's all happening. One, one snake as well. Yeah, snake. Okay. <laughs> Trying to avoid that. Brilliant. This is, this is better than doing resin. Right? Oh yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. <laughs> what a night. Rained a bit this morning and we're off again. We've lightened Janet's load. Jeff and Dag were already got light loads. Janet and I, Janet was well organised, I wasn't. But would you much rather be on the hull? No. Oh yeah, yeah, I like the hull. Yeah. You know I don't mind a bit of hard work, is it, um, Jeff? Uh, yeah, definitely don't. Yes, it was pretty hard work. <laughs> Check out this spot, Jan. Magic, isn't what it? What do you reckon? Look at the swimming pool, I just can't be bothered getting our stuff up. Good, eh? Don't step back. Don't fall back. <laughs> so this is Saltwater Creek, and uh, this was supposed to be about neck deep at high tide and uh, yeah, fortunately it's filled up with sand so we don't have to disrobe so you're all off the hook and uh, we'll get these guys are about to come across but on the tide big weight I wouldn't be mucking around because the tide's on its way in you can see it's coming up over here what a spot eh just an absolutely amazing spot that's one bit of pressure off it's a bit of pressure off not having to have a swim I've got mine on too <laughs> I got my body undies on. Wow, mate, you had to swim hard to get across that. How good's that? We got video of Ellen going across here just up to about chest height. That's fortunate. Unless there's one more, but I think it's all here. Well, the river crossing up there is about waist deep. <laughs> I went across about neck deep. Actually, it looks a bit like neck deep down there for these poor guys anyway. So, I'm satched. I crossed here in the current 
um, it's about four foot deep and quicksand, <laughs> like deep. I got up to my waist in sand, so there might be a bit of chafing going on here a bit later on as I walk with wet bodies and bloody wet undies, but anyway, we'll see how we go. We've had multiple little river crossings. This one's about the best one, isn't it? Oh, that's a nice easy crossing and it's beautiful. Look at this, this is just paradise. What a cracker you of a spot. Look at that. Who'd have thought in Australia you'd get a running creek? Oh, there's only two crocs in it. Yeah. That's not too bad. Watch out for that croc, that's a croc there. <laughs> we don't have crocs. Snakes. There's a croc in there, isn't there? Oh shit, there's a drop bear. Oh, watch out, they're worse than the crocs. Jesus, I just saw a drop bear. Janet, you go first. Thanks. Sacrificial on this. Just watch it. They like your neck. They like biting into your neck. They do. They go for your, they go they for your go neck. They go for your head and neck, don't they? Yeah, right out. Their jaws go right over your head. Yeah. I saw him. He's about a foot long. They got sharp teeth as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit boggy, wasn't it? That bit. Yeah, well, this Look is that's, ratchet, ratchet. It's like it's all been blown down, isn't it? Yeah. Had a big windstorm here or something. Oh well, no, we made it. 7.2 kilometres, Jeffrey, Woo. today. Oh, this is yeah. a pretty easy walk. I'm glad we pushed on yesterday. Yeah. Well done, guys. Thanks, guys. Team. Yeah. Team low. Good effort, eh? That's it. We're all a bit buggered, but that wasn't too bad today. Today was a great day. Very diverse, uh, good walk.